Okay, so uh, let's start. Welcome to uh, Come to One One. Uh, this lecture uh, uh, will be video recorded uh, as part of the uh, experiment. So the video will be online later for your viewing player. So uh, I'm Professor Gu. Uh, this, uh, that uh, projector is not working now, but someone is coming to fix it. So just look at this side. So um, this is a textbook, object-oriented software engineering using UML patterns and Java. So it's highly recommended. Uh, uh, the slides are uh, pretty detailed, so, but sometimes uh, the textbook uh, can be very helpful in clarifying some concepts. Uh, so you can, uh, uh, if you don't want to buy it, you can kind of uh, buy it uh, among your group. We have uh, a, a group of five, uh, five people groups uh, for working on the project. So if you can share one book among several people, that's fine too. But it, it's very helpful. Uh, and also we'll use uh, sp.net and visualbasic.net uh, for the project. Uh, so we don't have a uh, standard reference book for it. But you can get, get one uh, uh, online uh, or uh, in bookstores. There are many such reference books. Uh, so here's the uh, grading, um, grading scheme. Participation is, uh, includes class participation, tutorial, and lab. It accounts for 5% uh, uh, of your grade. Uh, project is 40%. That is, uh, uh, we have a software development project. Uh, you need to uh, do a demo at the end of the semester. Uh, the main workload of this course uh, will be the project. So we have four activities. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, activity one is developing a prototype, a simple uh, rough prototype. Activity two is requirements. Activity three is design. Activity four is the final thing, final demo. So each one accounts for uh, different percentages of your grade. Uh, as you can see, activity, oh, this side doesn't work. This side works. Oh, it works now? Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. I think you pressed something there. Okay. Uh, so uh, activity two is the requirements. As you can see, we place a lot of emphasis on requirements uh, analysis. Uh, this is very different from your regular uh, programming projects in uh, operating systems, for example, where you don't have any requirements, just jump into coding. But uh, in this course, we focus on the uh, software process. Uh, midterm is uh, October 15th. That's a tentative date. We'll, we'll kind of, uh, perhaps modify it uh, to be around October 15th. Uh, it takes up 20%. The final exam takes up 35%. So uh, here's the uh, course uh, homepage. Uh, so uh, First, you notice uh, is that I have assigned you to uh, project groups uh, by your last name. Five people per group. Uh, the last two groups have four people because it's not a round number. Uh, but you realize that it doesn't make too much difference. Uh, having more people doesn't mean that you do less work. Sometimes the coordination among your group members can be a large burden. Uh, I will not uh, entertain, as I said, requests to change group assignments will not be entertained. Perhaps you prefer to be in the same group as your friend. But just like in the real world, you cannot choose your group members. Uh, you, you need to learn to work with uh, strangers and then eventually become friends. So you, you need to uh, uh, look at your group members, send an email to the uh, uh, to the other members and uh, set up uh, meetings. <laughs> so uh, here's the uh, general information. That's me. Uh, we have four TAs. Uh, their office numbers, and, uh, telephone numbers, emails. 
So contact them uh, if you have any issues. Lectures on Monday, 12 to uh, uh, 1.20, and Wednesday, 1.30 to uh, 2.50. So uh, this room, tutorials and labs. So uh, let me show you what they are. Uh, tutorials uh, talk about essentially uh, the software. Uh, the first uh, tutorial is on project organization and management with Microsoft Project. Uh, tutorial two is design your database and the UML and domain modeling, etc. Labs uh, are hands-on labs where you sit at a PC and work with the actual uh, tools you will use for your project. So Microsoft Access, ASP.NET, uh, etc. So these are very helpful for your projects. Uh, it is uh, you are required to attend them, but will not count uh, your names. But if you don't attend them, it's your loss. It's really helpful. Uh, so. So uh, we have uh, uh, six, uh, three sections of tutorials and three labs uh, with their uh, times and uh, posi uh, locations. Uh, you should be uh, you should know which which one you signed up for. Uh, but since the uh, tutorials and labs are uh, essentially have the same content uh, for all the uh, uh, tutorials and labs, so if you if you want to attend some other section, uh, but that's more convenient for you, that's fine too. Uh, as long as there's a place in the lab, that's fine. These are th these times are, are interchangeable essentially. So my office hour is Monday, 1:30 to uh, 3, or by appointment. Uh, I have an open door policy, so anytime you can drop by my office and ask questions or send emails. So that's the uh, the course schedule. This is the uh, essentially a rough. Uh, uh, please stop talking. So, a, a rough uh, schedule. So, uh, today is the day that you should start working on activity one. That is uh, implementing the uh, prototype for the project. And, uh, and uh, September 29th is when activity, you should start working on activities two, three, four. Uh, these are available for you to look at now, but you won't be able to, to work on them until you learn about UML and other uh, knowledge in the first uh, weeks of classes. Uh, so, activity one is due on October 5th, and October 10th, activity two is due October, uh, November 3rd, uh, December, uh, I think it's... Uh, I think December 3rd is when activity 3 and 4 are due. That's the uh, also the end of the semester. So notes and uh, uh, so you, you will in this course you will learn as much by doing uh, as uh, by listening. Uh, so First time that you will have this produce the software product rather than simply a program. The difference is the size. Uh, you you have to learn uh, from the experience with of working with in a large group. Uh, the workload will be uh, uh, pretty heavy. Uh, be pre prepared to spend a lot of time uh, on this course, uh, mainly on the project. Uh, so. Lecture notes are outlines, so the textbook is uh, it's often very helpful. Uh, the due dates are very strict. Uh, the, the programming project due date is typically uh, in the midnight, 12 o'clock. We'll check your timestamps uh, for your files. Uh, of course, academic conduct. So of course, these sources, that's the textbook uh, homepage and other reference books. So lecture notes, uh, I put all the lecture notes online now. So in, in the previous offerings, we put them uh, as the semester goes on. But uh, I thought perhaps I'll give you the uh, whole lecture notes uh, in the beginning. 
So if you want to read ahead, uh, you're welcome to. So that's the, uh, that's the whole uh, uh, course material. Uh, so project information. So the project uh, will uh, consist of each each group uh, consists of four or five people. The the, the project uh, the group member list is not finalized. It'll be finalized after the ad drop period. Well, some people will join, some some people will drop out. Uh, so uh, your project group must choose a group name and a group leader. Uh, so the leader will be responsible for the overall management of the project. And we'll have the say on uh, individual contribution of group members so to the project effort. So what is individual contribution? So here's the uh, example percentage effort uh, where you have, uh, say, uh, six members in the group who have four activities. Uh, if the if a member has uh, placed uh, a lot of effort into a activity, he gets a hundred percent. If he only puts in uh, uh, some effort, you get a seventy-five percent, depending on your the percentage of your effort. Uh, and uh, uh, and then. Uh, and uh, the grading of each activity will be multiplied by the uh, effort percentage. That is, if you uh, if a particular member is not performing, that is, uh, he's a freeloader, he doesn't do much, uh, then his uh, uh, grade for the activity will be uh, scaled down. Now you ask, Who's to decide the percentage of effort? That's the group leader's uh, responsibility, of course, in discussion with the group members. Oftentimes, we find out that it's, it's, there's often a consensus among the group members as to who's the uh, 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 not uh, performing. So, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, the group leader has the final say on the uh, uh, effort percentage. So you, sh you should choose your group leader carefully Make sure that he or she is fair. Uh, so, uh, activities. Uh, so activities do not have to be carried out sequentially. So have one, two, three, four. Actually, uh, two, three, four should be carried out concurrently. Uh, so the project uh, language are Microsoft Visual Basic .NET 2005, ASP.NET 2.0, database is Microsoft Access 2003. So uh, th these are the software installed in the computer labs. If you have newer versions uh, of, of the software on your local uh, laptop, that's fine too, as long as you can save the file to a compatible format. The demo will be in the lab. Uh, so you will Expect, you will be expected to learn how to use the software development tools mainly on your own. The tutorials and labs will help you, but they are very short. Uh, the main uh, learning task uh, will be yourself. Just like in the real world, you are expected to learn new tools and languages yourself. Uh, so your group may lose a member for various reasons. If this happens, you need to uh, be able to adjust uh, the group members uh, may not be exactly five, as I said, could be four. Uh, so uh, so pro pro computer resources seem to be scar scarcest and least available when needed most, so don't push off y your work until the last moment. Uh, so the four activities, the, their due date, start date and due date, and their values. <coughs> so the first activity, is the initial system implementation uh, where you are expected to uh, implement uh, an initial prototype, a partial uh, functionality uh, of the system. So, second activity is the system requirement specification. Uh, so, it, it says it's assigned on September 29th when the first activity, activity is due. But, uh, I pull it out now, so if you want, you can work on it early. 
but you wouldn't be able to work on it until you learn uh, the necessary materials first. Because it needs you to uh, design uh, requirements models with UML. Uh, and activity three is the uh, system analysis and design specification. Uh, activity four is the final implementation and demo. So, uh, I will put uh, some FAQs online uh, later from previous semesters on the uh, commonly asked questions on these activities. So, activity due dates will be strictly uh, enforced. So, in grading the documentation, uh, we emphasize documentation a lot in this course. We won't read your source code, but we'll, we will read your documentation. Uh, besides the technical content, you need to uh, consider its present presentation. Uh, so, including spelling, grammar, punctuation. Uh, so, individual contribution that's been discussed. Pro problem statement. So, this is the uh, you should read it very carefully. So, this is uh, a course registration system. <coughs> So at the beginning of the semester, students need to register for courses. Uh, but this project, uh, the requirements are different from both the uh, ASU course registration system discussed in the lectures. We'll discuss the reg registration system in the course. It's very similar to the project requirements, but they are not identical. If you just copy and paste, you, you won't get uh, a good mark and the current uh, SKUSC registration system. So this uh, system requirements are specified very exactly in, in the requirements. You should uh, stick to the uh, requirements. And uh, so uh, it div it's divided into student functionality, uh, professor functionality, where a professor can choose uh, a course to teach, uh, assign grades, and register functionality, where the register, the AIRO, can uh, add and delete courses and print report, etc. So the requirements are most uh, certainly some requirements that, that I have forgotten to specify. So you, you, should, you can uh, propose other features or functionalities uh, after discussing with the university representative. So imagine yourself as the software company, you're developing this uh, project for the university. And uh, and the end of the semester, you need to deliver a working product. Uh, the university representative, uh, that is uh, me, should approve uh, your uh, request for additional features and, and or change to any requirements. So the requirements are not uh, uh, set in stone as you learn in the real world. Oftentimes, as the project goes on, you uh, need to add new features or uh, uh, remove something, but uh, this is just a uh, uh, the main feature of, of the project. So uh, it is specified in the document. So in the course, we'll treat you as mature software developers. The labs and tutorials will provide you with some basic information on the software tools, but you expect it to take user initiative to learn the details. So. All right, here's the uh, FAQ, activity Q&A. So I got the uh, permissions that are set wrong. So these are pretty detailed. Before you send an email to me, you should read these uh, 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 FAQs first. So uh, great statistics, I will fill in this table as the semester goes on. You can see the average, median, and uh, how, how you are doing. So project resources, uh, so uh, you will have a bunch of links on the software tools, Visual Basic and ASP.NET, and access. So you can start from here. Uh, so in the previous semesters, uh, you were required to turn in uh, time logs and uh, weekly, weekly meeting minutes. Uh, so uh, there have been some complaints as to uh, uh, that this is a formality and not really helpful, so this semester I el eliminated this requirement. Uh, so you, you won't have to turn in any time logs or meeting minutes. But 
you are you are uh, required to hold weekly meetings, uh, or at least bi-weekly meetings, among the uh, group members, to check the progress and coordinate your 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 efforts. Uh, just just like in the real world, the, the software team must uh, collaborate. You shouldn't. Uh, uh, you know, only talk at the end of the semester. You should continuously communicate among yourselves. <coughs> so, examples of meeting minutes. So, permissions are wrong. So, uh, I won't check them. I won't ask you to turn them in this semester, but you're highly recommended to uh, keep minutes and uh, regular meetings. So, discussion board. Uh, so, you can post articles on it. So, uh, uh, you should uh, try to uh, ask questions on here. I'll check this board every day uh, instead of sending email to me so that everyone else can see your post and questions and answers. So, uh, okay, any questions so far? Okay, good. So, uh, so here's the uh, uh, course overview. So the focus is on long-term, large-scale software development projects. Uh, the, uh, uh, the course will provide you with a theoretical and practical foundation in software engineering. Theoretical is the uh, course material. Practical is the uh, project. The learning objectives are understanding of the uh, concepts as well as practices of software engineering. A hands-on experience with the commercial software engineering modeling tool, uh, specifically IBM Rational Software Modeler. That is a, uh, uh, a tool for designing unified modeling language uh, uh, design models. And experience with analyzing, designing, and implementing a realistic application as part of a development group. So all I give you is uh, this particular um, uh, let's see I had a document on the uh, project so uh, all I give you is the high level requirements of the core registration system what I want from you as a client so I am paying you money and you need to deliver a product I need students to be able to register for courses. I don't care how it's done. Uh, so the detailed software design, the uh, software architecture, the user interface, must be des designed by you. Uh, using the techniques I will teach you in the course. So it's not a, uh, a simple programming project as in the, uh, your earlier courses. So you need to uh, uh, learn uh, to build experience when analyzing, designing, and implementing a realistic application, starting from raw requirements as part of a group. It's not an individual project either. So the uh, overall lecture, so introduction, uh, that's the first lecture, and over modeling with UML, uh, that will take five lectures. Software development process, that is uh, uh, what process you follow, uh, what's the recipe, for uh, developing a, a project. Uh, requirements capture is five lectures. Analysis, uh, three. Design, three. Implementation, 0.5 lectures. So implementation will take up most of, most of your time, but the lecture is very short. Uh, testing, 3.5 lectures, and finally, one lecture each for software quality assurance and management. So uh, we have a detailed course schedule on the uh, course webpage. Uh, I think it's uh, it's here. So uh, yeah. So uh, important notes: uh, learn by listening and doing. Uh, so the project is important. Workload is very heavy. Uh, on average, 10 hours per week. That doesn't include lecture time. Uh, this particular project, uh, it is already simpler than the previous course project. That's why I assigned five people per group, while in the previous uh, semesters you had seven people per group. Uh, 
So don't underestimate the workload. It lo may look simple to you, but uh, uh, as you go into the programming details, it can take up a lot of your time. Uh, it's a four credit course. So that is the average uh, project hours per week. I think it's a semester in 2000 uh, for spring 08. As you can see, initially, you take it easy, right? And uh, near the uh, activity to a few days, work hard. Near the very end, work very hard. You don't sleep for a few days. <laughs> so, uh, so try to uh, try to uh, you know work hard in the beginning to uh, save you a lot of headache in the end. <laughs> Uh, due dates are strictly enforced. We check the timestamps, so there's no extensions. Uh, labs will teach you how to use software tools and practice design problems. Uh, copy and cheating will be severely penalized as in any other course. <laughs> be polite and considerate uh, to me and classmates. That uh, mainly means that uh, there's no talking. I talk, you listen. So the slide is pulled up here because uh, I had this persistent problem of a student talking in class. It's very annoying. It's disrupting to the classroom uh, discipline and disrupting to the other students. So uh, your parents paid a lot of money for you to sit here, to uh, listen to me, not to uh, talk among yourselves. If you want to talk, you can always go to the cafeteria. <laughs> So uh, any uh, people who persistently, persistently talk in the class will be asked to leave. Uh, so group-based uh, project, uh, six or seven, that, that's uh, out of date. Uh, now it's for four, four to five uh, students. The group may be assigned to different labs and tutorial sections. So the group doesn't have to uh, attend the same lab and tutorial. As I said, you can even pick and choose different uh, lab and tutorial times yourself. Uh, so uh, schedule oriented, strict deadlines, uh, tool based. Uh, so you need to learn these tools, uh, database tool, programming tool, and uh, modeling tool. Uh, minimal hand holding on the tools. Uh, you have to do self-learning. Uh, don't necessarily have to wait for labs. You are expected to uh, review the lab material before you even go to the labs. Uh, documentation is uh, graded uh, with 95% technical content and 5% presentation. Technical content refers to completeness, correctness, conciseness, and uh, uh, presentation includes the spelling, grammar, punctuation, etc. So this is the individual contribution which I discussed uh, uh, before. Uh, so the slide is not right. <laughs> no freeloading. This this scheme is mainly designed to prevent freeloading. It's uh, designed to be fair to everyone. Otherwise, uh, uh, just a few people doing all the work is not fair. So anyone who falls below 80% in the effort grade will uh, have to have a scheduled meeting with me to explain why you're not uh, putting effort into the project. <coughs> so problem statement, uh, the two-sheet, uh, two-page document I showed you is high-level requirements only. So you can add more requirements if needed. Uh, you can be creative but realistic. Uh, check with the client. The client specifically, that is me. <coughs> Uh, activity, uh, we have essentially uh, uh, a group form formation is done by me, so weekly meetings, at least one required. Uh, so uh, in the previous semesters, you're required to turn in the meeting minutes for proof that you did have the meeting, but uh, I trust you as adults and won't require you to do it, but you should uh, schedule meetings uh, regularly, if not weekly. So. Uh, plan your activity tasks uh, revise weekly. So you should have a milestone uh, based schedule and check your uh, schedule constantly to avoid uh, putting off all your work uh, to the end. So 
initial system uh, implementation. That's activity one. That is due on, uh, I think it's October 5th. Uh, it's on the website. So uh, the main purpose is for you to become fam familiar with the system requirements, become familiar with the development tools, and to learn to work at the project group. In the documentation for activity one, I specified the subset of functionalities you need to implement. So essentially, you need to have the basic functionalities like student registration. Uh, uh, but most of the functionalities are not required until the end. And activity two is the requirement specification where you capture and specify all the external system requirements as models. So the requirement document I give you, uh, uh, the two-page document is a uh, high-level requirement. You need to take it and design uh, models with UML to precisely capture the requirements. Uh, analysis and design specification, is, uh, they specify the most important uh, internal system requirements as models. So uh, activity two is focusing on external requirements. That is, this document acti for activity two is, is supposed to be uh, seen by the client and discussed with the client. But activity three, the analysis and design specification, is mainly used internally by the software developers, but not shown to the client. Uh, and finally, final implementation implements all the requirements in code. So any questions? <coughs> Is this necessary to hand in the regular meeting minutes? No, this semester, no. Okay. So it's for our reference only? Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay, so let's jump into the first lecture. So, the first lecture, uh, the learning objective, first understand the nature and importance of software, uh, appreciate that developing large software systems is a complex process. Not just programming is complex, but the whole process is very complex. Uh, know some techniques for dealing with software development complexity, understand what software engineering is and why it is important. So software and cathedrals are much the same. First we build them, then we pray. So this is a, from a famous software engineer and researcher, Sam Redwine. Uh, essentially, it says software is so unreliable that uh, uh, you pray after you build them to uh, so that they, pray that they work after uh, after you build them. So uh, what is software? Software is uh, computer programs. <laughs> Plus a lot more, configuration data. That is how to configure your software. Uh, your software may have a lot of options. Uh, documentation, uh, including system documentation and user documentation. So for example, in the course registration system, you may have a docu uh, documentation manual for the system maintainer, the IT staff, another documentation manual for the uh, user for the students and, uh, and professors. Uh, of course, this uh, system is so straightforward that there's no really not a need for user manual. But for uh, most other uh, uh, systems, you need a manual, a documentation. <coughs> so there are three types of software, uh, generic, custom, and embedded. Generic software is uh, software like uh, Microsoft Office, uh, where it is, uh, 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 sold in the store shelves, uh, it's also called shrink wrap software. That is, it's wrapped in uh, plastic and sold on, in stores. So, the copies in use is medium. Uh, it's very large, but it's medium compared to uh, the embedded software, which, which I'll discuss next. Development effort is medium. Uh, requirements come from market research. So, Microsoft has the marketing team they gather uh, requirements from doing online surveys or feedbacks from the users. Uh, 
etc. So custom software that is software developed for an organization is specific. Uh, the course registration system software you built is custom software for a particular university with the particular requirements. It's not applicable uh, for use by other universities. So copies in use is low. Uh, uh, often only one copy. Sometimes uh, more copies if the company uh, or organization has multiple locations around the globe. Uh, development effort is very high. Uh, so, and uh, requirements come from client needs. So you need to uh, talk to the client face to face. Uh, uh, starting from the uh, two page requirements I gave you, uh, perhaps you can uh, uh, discuss with me by email or in person to, uh, uh, to elaborate requirements. So, uh, and, and Belly software is the software that uh, doesn't run on the desktop computer. It runs in cars, in airplanes, in your cell phones. Uh, they're embedded into some other system. So that's why it's called Embedded software. Uh, copies in use is very high. So uh, how many cell phones are there, are there in the world? It's more than the number of computers. Uh, the microprocessors uh, produced every year uh, Ninety-eight percent of the processors processors go into embedded products. Uh, your DVD players, your cell phone, your washing machines, etc. Only two percent of the processors go into uh, computers, your laptops. So when you think about processor uh, uh, processor vendors, you know AMD and Intel, right? But there are many, many more companies making small processor chips for the embedded systems. Uh, companies you, you perhaps are never heard of, like ST Micro and Philips and other companies. So they make these small chips that are very simple, very low power uh, to use the embedded product. So development effort is low because the software is simpler. Uh, although it's becoming uh, higher and higher as the complexity grows. But the complexity is generally uh, lower than the custom software, also called enterprise. Uh, software. So uh, requirements come from client and hardware needs. So besides client needs, you need to uh, be aware of the hardware. So for this project, for the custom software, typically you have standardized operating systems like Windows or Linux but that insulates you from the hardware details. Uh, you don't care if your processor is an AMD or an Intel chip. As long as you have Windows, you just program for the Windows API. But for embedded systems, uh, you need to uh, interface with the hardware uh, more tightly. You need, you need to be aware of the processor details to optimize your software because you have uh, limited hardware resources. The hardware, the processor may be very slow. And you also need to uh, uh, optimize your software a lot more than the uh, uh, custom uh, enterprise applications because you need to save power to prolong your battery life, for example. So uh, alternative classification is uh, data processing software and uh, real-time software. So data processing is uh, a data transformation. Essentially, you have a bunch of data and your software uh, does some work and produces another bunch of data. Uh, so uh, uh, real-time software is the software that essentially responds to user requests continuously in real time. For example, in the car, uh, the uh, engine control software needs to interface, interact with the user continuously as he turns the wheel and steps on the brakes, etc. So these are two different, very different uh, types uh, of software. Typically, custom software is a data processing, while embedded software is a real-time uh, software. But it's also possible to have other combinations, like custom uh, real-time software, that, like real-time enterprise applications, uh, like uh, stock brokerage software, where you need to have the up-to-date uh, information on stocks. And when you issue a uh, buy stock request, they need to go through within um, a certain time limit. So. So in, in this course, we focus on custom software and data processing. 
that is custom data processing software. So uh, for these are mainly business applications uh, like a company's uh, inventory management or customer information management or uh, online sales, etc. So, so software is pervasive and essential uh, part of almost all org organizations. So it's a key part of many products, as I said, in the embedded systems. Uh, so uh, in the company, you typically have these parts, uh, sales department, manufacturing, inventory, accounting, engineering. So each one uh, needs a software system to, to, uh, to manage your daily, their daily operations. Uh, and of course, these, two, these systems must talk to each other, communicate and collaborate. Uh, so for example, uh, the sales uh, system may need to send information on uh, how, how much product you, so, you sold uh, for the uh, past day into the inventory system, so the inventory system can order more inventory. <laughs> Uh, uh, and also, accounting system needs to talk to sales to uh, uh, check your account balance, etc. So, uh, uh, it's a big business, uh, several hundred billion dollars per year uh, spent worldwide and growing. Uh, so, this is the uh, software demand in terms of a dollar amount as it grows over the years from 1950 to 2000. Uh, in the early days, in 1950s, only scientists and the engineers used computers. The computers are huge. Uh, they take up a whole room. And only highly trained uh, scientists with uh, white coats can use them. Uh, but the scientific and technical computing software has, is pretty flat. Uh, what's growing a lot is commercial software and personal uh, information and uh, education software. The commercial software is the uh, uh, software used by companies, uh, for example, managing these uh, inventory of these systems. Personal uh, information education software are the software that you use daily, like Microsoft uh, products and uh, uh, cell phone software, etc. So uh, the software is very complex to develop. So here's the uh, uh, this is the uh, man months. Man months is a quite common uh, metric for measuring the effort required to develop a piece of software. So if you have five people, uh, four months, that's 20 man months. Uh, and uh, the horizontal line is the uh, thousands of the language statements. So if you have 100,000 lines of code, it's uh, pretty manageable, but as you grow to uh, 600,000 lines of code, uh, the man month's effort grows uh, rapidly. So uh, it's very complex to develop. So in B2 Bomber, uh, there's 3.5 million lines of code. Uh, Windows 95, 15 million lines of code with estimated 5,000 estimated bucks. Uh, Windows XP is 40 million lines of code. So, uh, if you uh, imagine drawing this, cur uh, this curve up to uh, 40 million, you can see how many man months are required. <coughs> so, where, the, where does software complexity come from? So, uh, first of all, the application domain. The problems are inherently complex. Uh, and the developers are not domain experts. So domain expert is someone who is very familiar with the application domain, but who may not be necessarily uh, a computer expert. So uh, for example, if you're developing a, uh, a sales system for use by the sales, sales people in your, in your company, the sales people may not be very technically savvy. They may um, know a little about computers, uh, but they know a lot about sales. So they are domain experts. The developers, that is you, are not domain experts. Uh, therefore, you need to uh, talk with the domain experts, uh, especially during requirements stage, to understand the application domain. <laughs> Communication among stakeholders, 
That is, a stakeholder uh, is someone who holds a stake in the project. Uh, so, uh, including clients and developers, your client is someone who, is the guy who pays you money to write the software. Uh, so the stakeholders use different vocabulary. So domain experts, uh, uh, they, they, they need to uh, talk to the developers, uh, and developers themselves may have different vocabulary depending on their backgrounds. So some people may not, may not be familiar with the progr particular programming language you use. Uh, they may be more familiar with Windows, while this project uh, is perhaps based on Linux. So uh, human languages are inherently ambiguous. So uh, stakeholders have different background knowledge. That, that is why communication uh, is a key uh, source of complexity, especially when the project uh, grows large. Uh, management of large software development projects, so you need to divide the project into pieces and reassemble the pieces and coordinate many people. So the project is too large to be, han too large to be handled in one piece. Uh, you need to learn to use uh, 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 a source uh, called control, that is a revision control tool to manage uh, everyone's contribution. So uh, in particular in this project you need to uh, do the division among the team members. Uh, coding uh, software is a complicated engineering process as goes without saying. So it leads to uh, quality problems so uh, unreliable software, so Ariane 5 rocket is, is this uh, expensive rocket that exploded because of a software bug. Uh, Hong Kong airport uh, had a problem uh, uh, when the software was initially built. So I, I think I, I have uh, another slide in the notes to discuss the details of these uh, incidents. Uh, so So uh, Ariane 5 uh, uh, rocket made its maiden flight, uh, but it failed because a chain of software failures. It's in the textbook section 3.1. London ambulance uh, uh, incident uh, happened because uh, it, it uh, essentially the scheduling system got, uh, had a bug so that the ambulances were not dispatched to the right places. So many people died. Some people died because of the scheduling system. Uh, the system did not respond uh, uh, promptly as uh, they would have done without this software failure. Uh, TRAC-25 is this uh, uh, radiation machine for treating cancer patients. So it turns out a software bug caused massive doses of uh, over-radiation uh, to the patients and caused three deaths of the patients. So the uh, the important root cause was the lack of quality assurance, which led to an over complex, inadequately, inadequately tested system being developed. London Stock Exchange was a uh, transaction settlement system, so it was canceled after spending 75 million pounds. Uh, so estimated loss was to 450 million pounds. So even after spending 75 million, they decided to cancel it because developing it further will cost even more money. So these are the uh, uh, incidents. So software can be unreliable, uh, unsafe, or abandoned uh, in the London Stock Exchange example, or in inflexible, that is hard to change and maintain. Because software can live on for many years. Uh, as time goes on, you need to add new features or fix some bugs. You need to maintain the software. So if the software is well designed, it's easy to uh, change. Uh, if it's modular, you can just uh, localize your changes. It's very good. But if it's uh, badly designed, you can have a spaghetti uh, uh, code. And any change will involve the whole system. And that will be uh, very hard to maintain. So. Uh, project management pro management problems. So project 
can be often over schedule and over budget by an order of magnitude. Uh, so, uh, so soft engineer productivity problems. So, uh, of course, we always uh, uh, you always don't have enough uh, soft engineers. Uh, uh, it is estimated that the average producti productivity of an engineer per day is perhaps uh, about a dozen lines of code. That includes the debugging time uh, and coding time together. So, so for large projects, 25% are canceled, 50% take longer than planned, and 75% are operational failures. So that's perhaps uh, old data. I'm not sure if it's uh, still correct uh, today. Uh, so this is for large projects. So perhaps operational failures are less common, but uh, uh, but uh, longer than expected uh, schedule uh, uh, change is uh, very common. So software so quality problems. Uh, so we have uh, we have how to deal with the quality problems. So we need to set goals. There are many quality design goals, including correct, reliable, robust, efficient. All these are desirable quality characteristics, but we cannot hope to achieve them all. It is impossible or unnecessary to uh, achieve all of them simultaneously because of a time or cost or conflicting uh, objectives were, were just not important. For example, if you're developing the uh, flight control software for a uh, Boeing aircraft, What's the most important quality uh, goal? It is uh, correct, reliable, and robust, right? Perhaps timely is not that important. So the average time for developing a flight control system, I think, is over 10 years. But that's OK. If it takes 10 years, it takes 10 years. Uh, but for, say, your, a mobile game software, uh, for a cell phone, perhaps you need to get it out before Christmas. Uh, to catch the Christmas sales, uh, then timeliness is very important. Perhaps correctness and reliability is less important. Uh, if your software, uh, game software crashes occasionally, it doesn't really matter. Unlike the flight control software. So different systems have uh, different objectives. You need to pick and choose uh, most appropriate objectives that is realistic for the time and cost uh, budgets for your particular project. So uh, you need to choose the most important qualities uh, based on development uh, around these. Reduces the complexity of designing the system. So instead of uh, trying to do all, you try to focus on a few of the most important ones. So in the, in the uh, notes, I had another slide uh, to explain the details on each one of the, these attributes. So you can look at them yourself. So, so whenever you see this uh, lower right corner in the notes, you have this uh, symbol here. It means that in PowerPoint, it's a hidden slide. Typically, I won't show them in lecture. So it means that uh, perhaps you won't need to memorize this, uh, this slide. Uh, uh, as in for the other slides. So it's for a reference only. If you have, see this hidden slide symbol here. <laughs> so, uh, how to deal with project management problems, modular development. So large software systems are complex, so there's a limit to how much a person can understand and in any one time. Therefore, you need modularity. That is, Divide and conquer. So you have a system, you divide it up into modules, and uh, a module is any piece of software that it makes sense to consider separately, also called a component. So uh, modules need to interact with each other. So. Uh, so these lines are the interactions among the modules. For example, in your registration system, perhaps you need to have a UI module, user interface module, a database module, and a web server module. That's the high-level coarse-grained division. You may have more fine-grained division of 
modules as you design your software. So the inter interface uh, abstracts in modules, so the developer does not have to know how the module is implemented. So the module can be used by understanding only its interface. So for example, uh, an a interface uh, uh, can be a set of APIs, uh, function calls you can make to the module uh, so that you don't have to care, the inter care about the internal implementation of the module. For example, a software module that implements a sorting routine only need to provide a uh, interface that is sort with the argument as an unsorted array and returns a sorted array, right? Internally, you can implement the sorting module with uh, quick sort or bubble sort uh, or any sorting routine you have, uh, but the user of the module only needs to know how to use the module by calling its interface. It doesn't care about the implementation. Uh, it reduces the complexity of understanding the system. So. So instead of uh, understanding the internal details, say the sorting of modules, the internal implementation, you need to understand only its interface. Uh, so interfaces control how modules interact and control the software complexity. So later you need to, uh, you decide to change the sorting uh, to a different algorithm, a faster algorithm. You only need to modify this module. You don't have to change any other modules that call into your module. So interface encapsulates a module so that the developer cannot use knowledge about how the module is implemented uh, uh, when, it's when it's using the module. He can only use the interface. Module can be changed without affecting the rest of the system uh, as long as you don't touch the interface. As long as you change it internally, you only change the implementation. So this reduces the complexity of maintaining the system. So the first benefit is it reduces the complexity of understanding the system. That is, as a maintainer, you need to first understand how the system works. And then if you change and maintain, update the system, uh, the, the uh, uh, interface also reduces the complexity of maintenance. So abstraction and plus encapsula encapsulation equals information hiding. That's you hide information uh, from the other modules. So in C++, uh, you can uh, declare some attributes uh, or operations uh, as public, that, that is forms, which forms your interface, which can be seen by other modules. And uh, some attributes and operations that is private uh, that's part of the internal implementation. Uh, you hide this private information from the outside uh, modules. So uh, abstraction uh, helps with understanding the software, while encapsulation helps with maintaining the software. So modular development through the interfaces allows for more productivity in team development because you can develop the work among team members. Uh, fewer bugs, uh, more maintainable software, and more reusable software. That is, you can take out some modules and reuse them later in some other projects. Uh, possibility of module-based, uh, uh, component-based development, essentially these are synonyms. They mean the same thing. So. Uh, using a suitable software architecture. So when an architecture is, is a skeleton, uh, just like when building a house, you first build the architecture and then you fill in the uh, details. So the architecture is like a high-level skeleton while the components or modules are the low-level uh, muscles you put into the architecture, or the bricks, the building blocks. So uh, the uh, modular development reduces the complexity of cost and time estimates for developing the system. So uh, this is a very important task. Essentially, 
uh, at the beginning of the project, you need to uh, estimate how much money the project is going to cost and how much time it's going to take. Uh, this is important for uh, your contract with your client as to how much money you want to charge them, right? It's notoriously difficult to make the accurate estimates uh, because software is very, uh, it's very unpredictable as to how long it'll take. Uh, unlike other projects like uh, building a house where it's very predictable. If you have uh, s such and such requirement, it's easy to estimate. But for software, uh, you often grossly underestimate or overestimate the cost and time. So by having this modular development, you can estimate the time and cost for each module and then add them together. Uh, it makes the uh, cost and time estimates much easier and much more accurate. So software engineering challenges uh, for modular development is to first design good modules with the right things in their interfaces. Uh, so second, specify the suitable software architecture to support modules uh, or components. Uh, so the interfaces are very important as you design your own project, as you, uh, your own software modules. Uh, the right interface design uh, can uh, can help you with the uh, uh, with achieving a much uh, better structured software. So that's why the first step uh, in your project is to design the interfaces for your uh, C++ classes. So uh, training software engineers is uh, is the big issue. That's what I'm trying to do in this course. Uh, I'm training you as software engineers, not programmers. You have learned programming in your programming course. This course is, is not about programming, even though you will do a lot of programming. But the main emphasis is on high-level design. So difference of code between coding and software engineering is that the coding is programming in the small. That is to develop a uh, Linux uh, uh, module for your operating system project, yeah, it may have a few thousand lines of code. It may look large to you, but uh, realistic software projects have millions of lines of code. So it's very small in perspective. Uh, software engineering is uh, a discipline for dealing with such large scale pro uh, pro uh, programming uh, projects. <laughs> Software engineers need to be able to first talk with users with, in terms of the application rather than computer jargon. Uh, your user may be a 80-year-old um, grandma who doesn't uh, know how to use a computer, or could be a stockbroker who doesn't care less, couldn't care less about computers. He's, uh, he cares about financial applications, financial systems, or some secretary. So you need to be able to talk with the users uh, in their terms, not in the in, your, in the computer science uh, terms. Translate vague requirements and desires into precise specifications. That's the job of like, activity one. I gave you a, a requirement that is very vague. That is uh, perhaps written by uh, some uh, secretary. Uh, from uh, his or her uh, daily uh, experience. So you need to translate it into precise specifications uh, captured within UML, not just natural language. Uh, move all, among different levels of abstraction at different uh, stages of the project. The highest level is the vague requirements. Next is the precise requirement specification. Next is analysis model. Next is design model. And then, finally, implementation. So these are different levels of abstraction. You need to be able to move among them. So for this project, essentially, uh, we adopt a process where you go one way, from requirements to uh, the analysis to design to implementation. But I will discuss uh, later. Uh, there are many software processes 
uh, some of them uh, are uh, require an iterative process where you iterate among the different abstractions. <laughs> Build a model of the application, actually several models, <laughs> at different stages. Use and apply several design approaches. Uh, as I will discuss later, uh, you, you may have uh, a, uh, a waterfall process or a spiral process or iterative process. Different processes uh, are suitable for different projects. So as an engineer, you work on many projects during your career. You need to learn and use uh, and apply many approaches. Choose among alternatives and make trade-offs. So as I mentioned, there are many desirable quality goals you want to achieve, but you cannot achieve them all. You must pick and choose uh, the most important ones for your specific, for your specific project. <laughs> Working well-defined roles in a team. So uh, uh, in a realistic team, sometimes uh, you have developers and a few testers and perhaps uh, some uh, architect and some designers uh, everyone has a well-defined role, but for this course, uh, because the project is pretty small, so I think everyone should do uh, a little bit of everything from design to implementation to testing. So this reduces the complexity of building the system uh, by learning all these skills. Uh, as you can see, programming is just one of the many skills required uh, for a mature software engineer. So software engineering is establishment and use of sound engineering principles in order to obtain economically a software that is reliable and works efficiently on real machines. Uh, eventually, you need to be able to run it uh, on a real machine. And it's a multi-person construction of multi-version software. Multi-person, of course, is a team effort. Multi-version is because you need to uh, uh, come up with uh, new versions uh, every few years to update your software. Think of how many versions Microsoft Office uh, has. So it's engineering, dis uh, engineering principles. It's a disciplined effort. So by engineering, it's uh, opposed to hacking. Uh, hacking is when you don't have any discipline. You just uh, go in and write code from the beginning. Uh, regrettably, that's the uh, practice for a lot of the software companies, especially the small ones. Uh, but for large software organizations, you need to have discipline. Uh, economically reliable, reliable and efficiently, that is has building quality. These are just uh, one of the, uh, a few of the many quality goals we discussed uh, just earlier. Uh, on real machines, solve the real user problem. So, shouldn't be just on paper. Multi-person requires team effort, and multi-version is not a one-shot one effort. For this course, it's a one-shot effort. But for realistic software, you need to be able to maintain it and evolve it along, among, uh, along uh, many years of time, uh, timeline. So it, invo it involves a modeling activity. You build models of the problem domain and models of the solution uh, of the system to be built. So a uh, problem domain model is mainly the requirements uh, model, where you model what the user needs. Uh, in the user's vocabulary. Solution model is the analysis and design model uh, where you model the software entities, uh, the internal uh, construction of the software. Uh, so problem domain model is uh, intended to be uh, shared among the developers and clients while solution model is used by the developers internally. So they need to match, of course. A uh, problem solving activity, we look search for the appropriate solution in the presence of change. Uh, requirements change constantly, perhaps not for this course, but in a real life, uh, oftentimes clients will come up to you and uh, uh, discuss possible changes for the requirements. So you need to be prepared. So it's not algorithmic, but should be systematic. 
So solving an algorithm problem, so for example, designing a sorting algorithm is a problem-solving activity, but it's very different from the problem-solving activity here, where we are building a system. So knowledge acquisition activity, so learn as you go, but may need to unlearn. That means uh, you learn about the application domain as you go. As you develop the system prototype and discussing, discussing with the client, uh, you learn more and more about the system, uh, about the application. Uh, you may need to unlearn some of your assumptions uh, as you learn more. You may have erroneous assumptions when you come in the project, and gradually you, you correct them. So sometimes you need to start over. Uh, a rationale management activity, that is, our assumptions and solutions change constantly. We may need to revisit decisions made before. Uh, for example, uh, due to bugs and technology, uh, etc. So we need to remember why did we make this choice? Why did we choose a particular platform, for example? Why did we choose Linux? Is it because it's free? Or uh, is it because uh, some other, uh, some other uh, uh, reasons? Uh, so perhaps we need to uh, revise your decisions uh, later on. So soft engineering involves a lot of documentation and some coding. Uh, so that's the main difference from uh, just the programming in the small. So summary, developing large uh, software systems is a complex process. Uh, we need to deal with the complexity by having appropriate quality design goals. The keyword is appropriate. Pick and choose different goals for different projects. Uh, reliability is the primary goal for flight control, while timeliness is a primary goal for uh, mobile game, for example. So use modular development techniques, that is, develop your, sy develop your system into modules and adopt the divide and conquer approach, design interfaces uh, for your modules to achieve information hiding. Uh, training soft computer scientists to use effective software engineering techniques. Uh, so that's the objective of, the, of this course. Most of the software engineering involves modeling and documenting system requirements and solutions, i.e. doing programming in the large, not coding. So modular and documentation may often seem tedious and boring, but they are essential for helping to reduce complexity and thus building uh, better software systems. <coughs> OK, that's the uh, end of the first uh, lecture. <coughs> Any questions? OK, see you next time.